You know, you only get so many chances in life to do things right or do things better. Because the one thing, um, as we're young, that we always think that we have tons left of is time. But the problem is in life, you can't buy back time. And so it's important that if you're going to change your life, change your life. And this is a lesson that I learned a long time ago. And this influenced um, what led me to be in network marketing and online marketing and business, to do investments. Um, you know, both me and my son. My son, for instance, has never had to work for anybody else. Um, and if you know us, you know the story. Uh, he only worked six months in high school. Uh, to get money together for launch of a membership site that he was launching. And he needed some money to push it off so he could have a big bang with launching the membership site and the opportunity. And so he went to work for only six months and has never had a job where you get a, t a W-2 ever in his life. And he was mature beyond his years, uh, like a lot of us when we're in our early teens, 20s, we make a lot of mistakes. Well, my son John didn't make a lot of mistakes like that. He already knew up here that he wanted a great life. And so he made it happen from day one, and he has literally wrote his own ticket and can do the things that he want because he made that decision long before most of us ever do. So I'm doing this video today because, you know, that's what I do. That's what my son does. We're heavily involved in network marketing. That's like one of our, one of our main sources of income. Uh, we also do some affiliate marketing and stuff. And we run across people all the time that have failed. And we see a lot of the issues and different things that most people who try to, you know, start an opportunity online or get involved in network marketing or they want to start a business. And uh, we see a lot of the ways that they fail. And a lot of it has to do with our mentality of the way we look at things. And sometimes people don't understand, you know, when they want to get the things they want in life, that there are certain keys to it because, you know, as this image here you see, a guy with a luggage swimming out to a ship because you better hurry because, you know, if you've ever heard the saying, um, when your ship comes in, you better hurry up and swim out to it before it takes off without you because those opportunities pass us and time keeps passing and passing um, and things can happen in life and pretty soon you've let every one of your dreams and goals go by the wayside because of things that you let get in the way, uh, belief, attitude, all kinds of different things. But there are some lessons here I'm going to go through because, you know, if you're one of the people watching this video that really wants to change your life, there are certain things that you need to understand that helped motivate me uh, to change, you know, because I wasn't always successful, let me tell you. Um, the kind of person that I was before was not always that great. Um, and I had lessons to learn in life that got me to where I was so then I could teach my kids to be better people and to strive for more in their life. And I taught them lessons along the way, like the lesson of leverage, um, you know, is the key to 10x your income. Without leverage in what you do in life, if you're just working a nine to five job and you're getting paid 25 bucks an hour or 30 bucks an hour or whatever, um, what's happening is you can only make so much money that that time permits. And so most people live paycheck to paycheck because of that rut they get in of going home to work, home to work, home to work. And they think they got to work for 40 years for somebody else to hopefully get a retirement. But now most of the time, people end up working 
five, ten jobs in their lifetime because there's no stability in just your nine to five most of the time unless you're fortunate with the company you get in with and it's around for 40 years. And, you know, you're completely happy with what you have coming in and you, you, maybe you've been smarter with your money, but if you're not, and you're one of those people that are looking for opportunity, and that's who I'm, I'm reaching out here today, people who are looking to make their, their life better, who want opportunity, who want to go after their dreams and goals, and want to live an extraordinary life, you know, and a life that's filled with more abundance, more time for the things that you want to do, more time to spend with your family, and you got to have leverage in order to do that in business, network marketing, online marketing, sales, investments. All those things create leverage because they leverage either other people like owning a business. Uh, your business can grow and you have employees and you make a little bit of money off of a lot of people's efforts. And, you know, a lot of people in traditional businesses, well, they're taking a lot of risk. And so, yes, the person who goes out on a limb and starts that business, that's how they go after the dream. But that's leverage and why they're able to create wealth over time. Same with network marketing. You're leveraging an organization. You're building a team. You make a little bit off a lot of people's efforts. And the bigger your team gets, the more money you can make. And you can make residual income where if you were ill for three months or couldn't work, your money would keep coming in or even exponentially grow because sometimes in network marketing um, or even in business, if that happens and you have the right people in place and everything's humming along, yeah, your income can even keep growing because of that leverage. There are many people in network marketing who earn millions of dollars a year and a lot of it is earned passively because they have taken the time to build their organization and stuff, stuff like that. Same with investments. Over time, your, your, your interest that you get, your dividends that you get, it starts to compound. You're leveraging your money. It, you either got to leverage time in some way, skills to make more money and grow your life exponentially. Uh, you got to leverage money. You have to leverage something the more you work smarter and the more leverage in everything you do, including in advertising or marketing your business online, the more leverage you have. So that's why some people seem like to have success a lot faster than other people because maybe they have more of a budget to grow their business. Maybe they have figured out they're willing to do X, Y, Z. That's leverage too, where some people like won't do videos. They won't get in front of a a computer screen to save their lives and record themselves talking or uh, you know people won't like I don't want to start a, a blog I don't want to go on TikTok I don't want to blah 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 I don't want to I don't want to and those people never create the leverage but there are other people who go I'm willing to do whatever it takes and so they leverage whatever they can find to make everything grow faster and smarter you know they do more they be more and they work smarter by leveraging everything is leverage think about opportunity think about making money in your life think about anything in your life that goes on everything is about leverage and the more you can use leverage in your favor the better your financial abundance is going to be and a lot of times the better your relationships are going to be everything that you do is going to be better because if you have more money you can leverage your money to have somebody like where i live plow your driveway um, you know, in the wintertime, we get tons of snow. You can leverage money to have somebody else plow your driveway while you spend time indoors with your family or increasing your income even more. And that's what people who create wealth and create real change financially in their life, they have come to understand leverage and what it does for them. And then the other part is moving on through these life things that I learned, lessons that I learned in business and marketing. Procrastination is the greatest killer of success in your life. It stunts and destroys your brain. You know, I put this on the screen here, get it done. Because when you start to move in uh, a fashion that is not procrastinating, I mean, you know, like the garbage needs taken out. 
Don't pass it by and sit there and look at it. Grab it and go take it out. You come back in the house and, you know, you ain't got nothing else to do. Don't sit down in front of the uh, TV and sit and watch TV or sit and scroll on your phone. Just watching, consuming content on Facebook and uh, laughing at videos. I mean, everybody gets entertained by this phone. But this phone is a wrecker of success, truly. And it ended as a creation of success when you limit what you're using it for. If you're using it to create a video to put on uh, TikTok or a reel on Instagram for your business or for your network marketing that you're doing or sales, investments, for whatever you're doing, and you're utilizing this as leverage to make more money, then this is not killing you. But when you sit and go on Facebook and you go to the stream and you sit here and scroll through and sit here and read everybody's post, read everybody's stuff, uh, watch little reels, uh, consume information, and you do that two, three hours a day? You know, some people who do it more than that. Think about how much of your time in a year is eaten up doing nothing. Like, literally, destroying your brain. Because your brain is becoming susceptible to that quick entertainment in your head. So instead of being productive in your life or talking to your spouse or talking to your kids or talking to your friends and having meaningful, impactful relationships, you spend your time through your phone. This thing is evil. It really is. But it can be a blessing when you control it. Because otherwise, this will give you massive procrastination up your Yahoo and it will help you sabotage many things in your life. So, you know, you shouldn't take advice from people who are not where you want to be in life. So if you got some friends or you got some relatives and they're trying to give you advice about things in life and their life is falling apart, why would you take advice from them? Or, you know, financially, they're, they don't have any money. They are in a hole. They never seem to get out of it. Uh, they, they gamble away all their money. They drink away all their money. They, you know, whatever it is, don't take advice from people who are not where you want to be in life, at least. Don't take advice from people who are only going to bring you down or to tear you apart and get you distracted. You know, the other part about procrastination is always being distracted from accomplishing. Like, yeah, I'm too busy. I can't take out the garbage because, you know, I'm sitting here reading about what Jack's buddy did to him on Facebook. You won't believe this. Jack's buddy, you know, uh, took his wrench from his garage to borrow it and he never brought it back. Oh, my God. I mean, and that's what your life becomes. And so many people probably can relate to this watching this video. Is that literally is what your life becomes. Is a constant. If you're talking to your spouse or your kids about through Facebook. Like, that's it. And then you're talking about everything that happens on Facebook. Oh, you're missing out on so much in life. It is pathetic. You're, you're missing out on some of the greatest things that you're never going to be able to get back. Because why? Because you can't get time back. Remember, every year that passes. You know, I used to think about this when I was in high school. Oh, God, I can't wait to graduate from high school. Oh, God, I can't wait to graduate from high school. Pretty soon, I was graduated from high school. Um, you know, then it was another thing. And pretty soon that passed and that passed and that passed. And pretty soon I'm looking around and I'm going, well, I'm 30 years old. Holy cow. I blinked my eyes and life just sped by. Your life can be so much more impactful and meaningful when you don't let procrastination and distractions interfere from the quality of things that you can absolutely get out of your life and give to other people. Okay? So don't take advice from people who are not where you want to be in life. And remember this too. No one is coming to save you from your problems. Okay? I don't care how much you tell other people about your problems and 
you know, you're, you're banking on something coming in or this happening or winning the lottery or uh, it, it's not going to happen. N no one is going to save you from the problems. The government's not going to save you from problems. Your family's not going to save you from your problems. Your friends are not going to save you from your problems and strangers are not going to solve you from your problems. People, there are people in life who may help you get to where you want to go or help you see the way out. But that's where you're going to have to take advice from people who could actually help you, who have done what you're looking to do. But no one is going to save you. Your life's 1,000% your responsibility. And you have to accept it that way because then when you do, you go, oh, I'm in control. Oh, nobody's going to save me. There's no guarantees in life neither, you know. You can bank on a pension in our area where I live. We live in a big mining community. One of the mines went down years ago and literally wiped out people who had worked their entire life, their pensions, uh, wiped them completely out uh, because that company went totally bankrupt and lost everything they had as assets, everything. And the pension thing was not funded properly or something about it, and it, it totally vanished. Remember, there's no guarantees in life. So... Banking on one thing financially, like your job, a oh, huge risk. You're asking for problems, okay? That's why usually people who are financially abundant don't put all their eggs in one basket. And I don't mean like online, you go find 10 opportunities and you do them. They don't put all their eggs in one basket, meaning as they make more money in their life and maybe they're working a job and they're building an online business or they're involved like we are in network marketing and they're starting to crush it, you know? They're making a bunch of money. They don't go find another opportunity to invest it in like online or something like that. What they do is they take that money and diversify it and maybe they start buying drips, dividend reinvestment uh, stocks. You know, it's called a drip, dividend reinvestment program. A lot of stocks have them where their money then starts working for them in a different avenue and starts building automatic reinvestment of dividends back into more stock. That's what I did many, many years ago. I started getting drips so that my money could work for me and keep growing me stocks while I sleep because I just kept putting money into them. See, that's diversifying. That's multiple streams of income. Maybe you get into... A small real estate thing with some of your money, like you have rentals, a small apartment building where there's four or five, you know, apartments in it. And you start making rental income. And then over time, because the value of your property, you keep it up and take care of it and everything, it grows. And so when you go to retire or you want to uh, uh, lump sum of money for something, you sell the property, it's been paid off. Your renters paid it off. See, again, that's leverage. Same thing with the drips. They're leverage. And so now you got things firing on all cylinders. Not only, maybe you're still working a job. Maybe you quit like we did years ago. Like, well, my son's never had to except that six months, but I quit working for anybody else when I was like 38, 39 years old. That maybe you do the same. Maybe you keep your job. You still love your job, but now you have plenty of money coming in and now you're diversified. So anything happens to your job, Anything to what you're doing online, anything happens with the stocks you're involved in. You have multiple income streams that are diversified apart from one another that all have leverage. Okay? Remember, that is multiple income streams. That is leverage again. Everything should be around leverage, not slitting your own throat because you jumped into 10 different opportunities and now your marketing efforts are... Uh, diminished because you're not focused on a goal of uh, building something to a real income like six or seven figures, okay? Idle hands are the devil's workshop. All you need is action and self-discipline. You can read all the self-help books you want in your life. Now, I've read many of them. Some of my favorite books of all time are Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and Rich Dad, Poor Dad by uh, Robert Kiyosaki. And... I've read those many times. Now, I took action on what I learned in them. See, you can have all the knowledge through your head, but it's useless if you never put it into motion. Just like what I'm going through and sharing with you in this video. If you never put anything, any of these things into motion, they're pointless. 
and you have no conviction behind them. Like if you were trying to teach them to somebody else, but you've never done them, it's it, it, there's no conviction behind them. You know, sitting idle, doing nothing. Again, this is being idle. And that phrase, idle hands are the devil's workshop, are so true because when you are sitting doing stuff like this, or are you sitting playing games on your phone for hours on end instead of talking to the people you love or being productive, making your life financially more well off by building your, your network marketing business or making sales or your uh, building an affiliate business or a traditional business and you're constantly spending time with things that don't give you any kind of real value in your life then you're going to diminish everything. And that can be the total catalyst, just like take not taking the garbage out, not doing the dishes if there's dishes there to be done. When you start doing things like that and you are productive, you feel better about yourself. You are better because now you're doing things without anybody looking at you, telling you to do them. You know, some people are like, ah, oh, my spouse nags me to death to do this, do that. Well, it's probably because you sat on your phone playing around on Facebook or whatever or sat playing video games or something and did nothing to contribute. And maybe your spouse is right. Maybe you are need nagging. Uh, nobody wants to hear that kind of stuff, but it's because you're not being... If you're being productive, nobody's going to nag you. You're being productive. They can see it. Your actions speak so loud, no words need to be said. Okay? And unless you went to college to learn a specific skill, very specific, like doctor, engineer, lawyer, you can make more money in the next 90 days just learning sales, to be honest with you. There are so many golden sales opportunities in learning how to do, like, um, closing for... There's tons of places online looking for people to close sales for them. And you literally can make more money closing sales than you can make being a doctor, an engineer. There are people who make, you know, $1,000, $5,000 a sale, $10,000 a sale. Um, or online marketing, where you build, you can build residual income. Network marketing. There are many network marketers who make millions of dollars a year, but never went to college at all. Because again... It's got leverage. So, you know, a doctor, engineer, lawyer has leveraged skills that are in super high demand. And that's why they get paid more in their jobs. Because, again, they leverage something. But, again, they're only paid as much as they can do per hour unless they start their own firm, unless they start their own medical practice uh, where they're in control and they hire other doctors. Engineering, same thing. Again, you're limited by time. It's leveraged to a certain point, but not leveraged like something that can build and build and build. It, it is something, unless you turn it into a business where you can have more leverage, you're still going to be limited in some capacity. So remember this now. Nobody cares about your success. You ever seen it? People post stuff wherever, Facebook, or you talk about something you've done that is... Uh, you're proud of that you did and you had success with, you know, you know, somebody telling, hey, I got a promotion at my job. Uh, you know, some people will be happy for you. A lot of people won't be happy for you because now maybe you're making more money than them. And unfortunately, that can be the mentality of people. You know, when I grew up as a kid, I had people living around us and I our family did a little bit better than the other families that were around us uh, because of circumstances my family created to have a little bit more. But there was a lot of poverty in our area because we live in a mining area and at that time there was tons of layoffs and some of those parents sat around doing nothing and didn't go get any other work. They just collected their, uh, you know money that they got from being laid off or whatever, you know, because they're out of work uh, and that's it. And then sat around and complained and then picked apart anybody else who was still doing better 
because they didn't rely on, I don't even remember what it's called. It's been so long since I worked for somebody else, but you know, where you lose a job and you can, you still get paid. It's not, uh, what's it called? Unemployment, unemployment. There you go. God, it's been that long. Uh, but anyway, they would literally talk about uh, my mom and dad family because of the fact and they would make mean comments because we were still doing okay and actually not having the problems they were. But that's because we didn't make the choices. My parents didn't make those choices and they were still being productive and didn't just rely on layoff money and that's it. And then you no longer you're laid off, it goes down, down, down. Um, again, that is making sure you're a thousand percent responsible for your success and what happens to you. And then you are in control. So when you realize you're in control, then you don't sit around and look at other people and be pissed off because they're still doing well. But in life, unfortunately, no one cares about your success. They're not gonna revel in it unless you're giving them, you're giving them money. That's when people will come to you and ask you for loans, let me tell you. Or ask you, hey, you know, could you give me $1,000 and blah, blah, blah. And then they'll give you a real sob story as to why they need it. But then 20 minutes later, they'll be telling you how they just got back from the casino. Um, you know, so don't be shy. Go out and create your chances. People love to revel in people's failures, not in their success. So don't listen to what other people say. Uh, you know, like, oh, that don't work. You're nothing but a dreamer. You know, those are some of the people who went on to be the wealthiest people in the world, were people that had a dream. They went out and made it happen, created their chances. They didn't sit around and, you know, because again, being idle, you know, idle hands are the devil's workshop, you know, that gives people poor attitude again because you're not being productive. You're not doing anything. So all you have is time. And when all you have is time, your brain can do a lot of funky things, you know? So if you find someone smarter than you, work with them. Don't compete. When you find somebody who's really smart and it's something that you need to learn, listen to them. Find out what they know about what you don't know and then take action on it. Because again, that can only help you further your own goals, finances, and dreams. Don't let bad habits consume you. Number nine here. Don't let bad habits consume you. I have seen people destroy what money they have coming in and it boggles my mind. And I'm no different at one time. I mean, this is a long time ago. I had a really bad habit with drinking pop and I'm talking, you know, six bottles of pop a day and I was bad. I wouldn't even go buy like a case of pop in cans cause it's way cheaper. And I would buy bottles. It had to be in a bottle and that's a, bad habit and let me tell you quitting drinking pop was super hard i was so addicted to it and when you add up every one of those bottles like if i grab out my uh, calculator here and i go well today i don't know what a 20 ounce bottle of pop even is because i haven't bought one i'm sure they gotta be two bucks or more i'm guessing but let's just say two bucks for simplicity's sake let's say you drank six bottles of pop a day you go two times six equals 12 bucks times 30 equals $360 a month on pop. You know, that's the kind of people sometimes I run into when doing this stuff online where they'll be like, I don't have any money to build a business. Well, what do you mean? It's dirt cheap to build a business online or get involved in network marketing. Do you know you could literally potentially make millions, six figures a year? Uh, you can get started for 50 bucks, literally 50 bucks, uh, and you don't have any money, but there goes a 20 ounce bottle of pop down their throat. I mean, come on. Those are bad habits and people don't realize I once counseled a couple that are good friends of mine. And when I went through their bad habits, 
They could not believe how much of their money they were wasting. They were blown away. But I will tell you this, because they never learned to go, hey, if you want to change your life, change your life. Because they never did that. They still are in financial hole all of the time and have to figure out and beg people to bail them out because they never changed all almost all of those habits. Because people don't realize simple bad habits like drinking a bunch of pop every single day. Um, I mean, there, there's much cheaper ways even to drink pop or there's there's ways to cut down lots of wasteful money that you can use to start a drip. You, you know, your local power company, I started mine with $20 a month. That built into thousands of dollars, $20 a month over the years, compound interest, you know, dividends, rebuying uh, more stock and that stock growing, making the dividends bigger, bigger, bigger every single year. That was $20 a month that I stocked away in that first drip. Uh, 20 bucks. How many pop is that drinking in a month out of bottles or whatever bad habit? All these things can harm you when you don't recognize them and take an accounting of the things you do in life because most people don't want to take an accounting of what they do in life like seriously they don't they don't want to take an accounting and that's what we have to do as people if you want to live a life of abundance and live your life to the fullest and do all these wonderful things and spend all this time with your family, your friends, go on tons of vacations, give to other people, uh, spend time in charities to help other people, whatever it is that you desire. It, that's what it takes to do that. It's not going to come haphazardly. You have to get in control of you and realize that's where it all starts because just bad habits like that alone can destroy your finances. There are so many bad habits that people have. Buying a certain amount of lottery tickets every single day, trying to win the lottery. I mean, come on, I, I, I can't remember the last time. I, I've maybe bought in like 10 lottery tickets in my lifetime, and that's probably whenever it first started, I, I don't know how many eons ago, a decade, two decades ago, maybe two decades ago, I think. I, I'm not even sure in our state when that actually started. It was a long time ago, and I think I bought maybe 10, 12 lottery tickets in my whole life. Uh bad habit. Why would I get involved in that? Not going to make me any money. Not going to make my relationships better. It's not going to do anything for me. So complacency, comfort is the worst addiction and a cheap ticket to depression. Why are so many people depressed nowadays? They're complacent. If you're being productive and doing things and moving and helping people and taking out the garbage when you see it, doing the dishes, mowing the lawn, whatever, and you're doing things and helping other people out and spending time, uh, you know, with the people you love um, and striving to be able to do more for them, you're not going to be complacent. You don't. Your brain's not going to have all that uh, stuff going on where you just think, you know, just like bad habits. Well, they don't even think about, geez, I drank $360 worth of pop in a month. And I keep going back to that because that was one of my really bad habits a long time ago. But it was, and I kept doing it. And if you get complacent like that, you get comfortable, and pretty soon you do nothing to improve anything in your life. Number 11 here, don't tell people more than they need to know. Respect your privacy. And this goes along with number 12 here. Don't air your dirty laundry publicly. Nothing worse than losing your senses and acting like a fool. I mean, you ever see people sometimes go on Facebook and start airing their dirty laundry on there? I just, I DX those people as friends. Um, like I said, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook unless it involves helping my life. Uh, I do very little on Facebook. I don't sit in the streams. Every once in a while, I just maybe do it for five, ten minutes just because I am human, but I totally control it. I don't have that as a bad habit in my life, and I refuse to, and I never will because I think that's an absolute waste of time. But I have seen people literally, and I just, I laugh and goodbye. They're not, I'm not going to keep them as a friend. Why? Why would I? Why would I want somebody going and airing all their dirty laundry on social media. 
And I'm, I am dumbfounded at what some people will post on Facebook about what's going on in their relationships and different things. I'm just like, yeah, click. <laughs> what a waste of time. That's how you learn what to keep away from you when you see that kind of stuff. So don't tell people more than they need to know. Respect your privacy. Don't air your dirty laundry. And that goes along with number 13. Keep your standards high and don't settle for something because it's available. Just, you know, do your due diligence once in a while. You know, don't just buy stuff because it's available and you can. Do your due, due diligence. Ask yourself, do I really need that right now? All purchases that I make, I literally go, do I really need that right now? No. I'll even, me and my wife, I'll even do it with her. I'll be like, she'll be like, well, we should buy this, blah, blah, blah. And I said, should we really buy that? Mm, she'll go, not really. And I said, do we really need it? Is it? I mean, like, she wanted to buy a bigger TV for one of the rooms in her house. Well, we got a lot of rooms in our house. We got a lot of TVs already. Um, and it's just me and my wife. I'm like, do we really need a bigger TV for that room? Is that really going to add value to anything? Mm, not really. There's already a TV in there. Exactly. Let's not spend the money on it. Hey, that's more money we can make work for us and make us even more money. You know, when you have money working for you, that's when you can go pay cash for an automobile. That's where you can buy a second home. When you've got enough money working for you, that's when you can take another two vacations in a year. Or you can uh, help somebody out that you love and you know has in, had a medical you know, catastrophe in their life and they need help. That's where you could spend time helping them. Um, and that goes on to number 14 here. The family you create is more important than the family you come from. You know, some people come from really dire circumstances. And they get caught up in that and they tend to follow suit. They say it takes seven generations to break a family problem, situation that keeps happening within that family. And I say bullshit. It just takes one person to decide that's not going to be me. That's not going to be me. I'm going to get out of that. I'm going to do something different. And you can take every kind of circumstance you can possibly ever imagine in life that has happened to somebody in their family when they were younger or at some time in their life that has decided they were not going to let that keep them down or they were not going to let that be them and they chose to create a awesome family a family full of many blessings because of all these other things that we've been talking about here throughout these um, lessons or you know things that you really want to get ingrained in you that can help you change your life so train yourself to take nothing personally to save yourself from 99.99% of mental problems. I've seen a lot of people in my life life languish over e taking everything personally so much that they get anxiety. They get riled up about it even if it didn't really happen like that or uh, somebody really didn't say it like that but that's the way they took it because they took everything personally. See, I don't take anything personally. Nothing. Because if you do, it can literally destroy you and destroy your mental health. And I know people that have lived their whole life like that, that I have met, ran into, know. that, And I have to spend very little time around the ones that I know that are like that. Because that's what they want to talk about every time in their life. Is all these problems and the resentment and the anguish that they feel for those people that caused them all this pain and are doing all this stuff to them. So train yourself to take nothing personally, because if you do that, how does it affect your life? How does it affect your life? It doesn't. That keeps you from taking on any part of that. That's why you don't take stuff personally. And you're only causing yourself grief when you do that. Number 16, 
If you don't separate yourself from distractions, we talked about distractions, your distractions will separate you from your goals. And, and they will. Every time you get distracted, like for me, network marketing, I'm building my network marketing business, I have goals, you know, get to $1,000. Once I got there, $2,000. Once I got there, $10,000. Once I got there, you know, any time in there, if I sat and got distracted for a long period of time, um, my goals are going to go further, 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 further apart. Because I keep getting distracted. And then I wonder why it's taking so long. Why you have so much disappointment. Why you have so much bad feelings of, God, I don't know if I can do this. Belief in yourself. Because you keep letting yourself get distracted. You can't do that. You have to learn. What I learned to do was work in blocks. To do everything in kind of blocks of time. Whether it's my health. Like when I get done with this video here. Um, it's getting 10 o'clock at night right now. I'm actually going to go outside and walk because I need to get to 10,000 steps today and I need to make sure that I, I get that done so I keep track every single day. Why? I want to be healthy. I want to live strong and vibrant and healthy in my life. Um, time, remember, don't wait till it's too late because once, once it's too late, it's too late. So make sure that you... Choose your goals that involve different aspects of your life as well, and you place importance on each one of them. So I work in blocks of what I accomplish, what I do in life, and I try to always do more, be more, be better, and be better for the people in my life. And always remember number 17, when opportunity knocks Make sure you have your hearing aids in and you hear that, you know, that little knock at the door because it may not be loud. It may be really quiet. So make sure you have your hearing aids in and you pay close attention. You know, just like the saying says, I love the saying, be ready when opportunity comes. Luck is when prepare, preparation and opportunity meet. Roy D. Chaplin, Chaplin Jr. And that's actually a picture of me um, out on an island. Me and my wife went camping with two friends of ours a few years back and went up for a week and stayed out on an island in Lake Superior in this beautiful area and went fishing, you know, great big salmon, king salmon, lake trout. Amazing time, had great time, great people, great food, just had an amazing time and that was me standing there one night watching the moon and the lake was very calm for Lake Superior you know that's not always happens a lot it's a huge lake and when it's rough it's rough and it was such a peaceful moment that I asked my wife to take this picture of me looking out because it was so serene and so peaceful and this photo I, I make sure I never lose it because it's just a constant reminder of the quality of life you can have when you're ready for opportunities in your life and you're prepared, you know, just like when we joined um, Great Life Worldwide in February. I was ready. John was ready. So we immediately got started and we, you know, because we made a change from the other network marketing company we are involved in for over, you know, I was involved personally in it over 15 years and we made lots and lots of money but many reasons for the change and had to be done. But we were prepared. We were ready to, prepared to rock and roll. And so, you know, when opportunity knocks, make sure you got your hearing aids in and you're prepared and you're ready to take action and go for it because that's what we do in all aspects of our life. And we try to do everything with a passion uh, we care about everything that we do. We care how we affect people. We truly want the best for people. And that's why I really wanted to do this video today because all these things that I just went through are so important to me and how it changed and affected my own life. And I always keep this in my mind, this image of, hey, you better hurry. When your ship is out there, you know, jump in the water and swim out to it. Don't let that sucker take off without you. Because if you're going to change your life, you're going to change your life. And so, 
If you want to know what me and John are doing, um, we'd love to have you join our team. We are going to help our team members, and we are helping our team members absolutely crush it um, in a great business called Great Life Worldwide. If you're looking for an opportunity, um, we'd love to, like I said, have you join our team. So underneath this video or underneath any one of our videos, um, especially mine, um, you'll be able to get a, a see the link for Great Life Worldwide. You can click on it. Just click on more underneath the video. Click on it and you can take the free tour and learn more about what we're doing. And, and, and that's my shameless plug uh, for today of, you know, what me and John are doing. Um, but back to this list, you know, no matter if you never join us in anything, you know, you just watch our videos and use what parts and pieces that you want from them. Um, that's great. If it helps you change your life, we're super stoked for that. And if you never join us in anything, we just want you to do more, be more, be better, and to live the life of your dreams and go after them no matter who you follow, what you do. Um, we truly want that for anybody that we can possibly affect in a positive way. So other than that, my friends, we will see you on another video and have a great day.